it is my pleasure to introduce Miss Kim Palin, founder of Now That's Neat. Successful mother of five and entrepreneur, she has a remarkable story of courage, perseverance, and strength as a woman, overcoming enormous adversities throughout her journey from past to present. She is clearly an inspirational individual and I'm very proud to be interviewing her here today. Kim, thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for welcoming me, Deborah. Let's go back five years ago to um, when you had the accident uh, with the nine-year-old little girl. I was uh, on my way to pick up one of my children from their school mm -hmm. and uh, probably the least distracted, least in a hurry we had been in a while. Um, turned a corner and there she was actually didn't even see her oh. um, I had my two boys with me at the time um, actually had to look in the rearview mirror to see what had happened and you had actually thought that she died at one point for 24 hours I I did believe that I had that I had killed her mm -hmm. um, and I believe for the first time in my entire life I was willing to exit this world very yeah. quickly, I just wasn't very much a blur, but just I knew what that was going to do for yeah. for myself and my family. She was she was in the hospital for months. Mm -hmm. um, I was unable to to see her or or help or have anything to do with the the situation. You had your her mother's forgiveness at one point. She even so much as took you to church, and and I, that gave you a lot of comfort. What happened shortly after the forgiveness from the mother? Um, we became very close mm -hmm. and the little girl spent weekends and weekends with mm -hmm. me as, as did her mom. Um, and then just about four or five days after the kids and I relocated, there mm -hmm. was a knock on the door and uh, I was being served and the family had decided that they needed to sue me. Now I know um, even more uh, things happened to you in this in this first one year uh, away from your environment that you were in for 18 years you were married to this husband and uh, right after that happened you actually um, got involved with I think it was your manicurist yes and she had suggested to you to take your laser rejuvenation clinic training and you had gone out and done that and she was going to bring you all these clients and and so you went into a joint venture or you thought that's what you were mm -hmm. doing and you gave her fifty thousand dollars now did. what did she do with that as compared to what she was supposed to do with that money um in my learning curve of life mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> and my naiveness these, yeah, I, I just live how experience. I would live yep. or how I would treat somebody uh, she did initially order the first laser that we discussed, mm -hmm. yeah. um, neglecting to tell me it was coming from China and it was non-returnable and it was non-CSA approved. We realized it wasn't going to work. We, she found the second laser that was going to work, that mm -hmm. was, everything was as, as is, and she ordered, uh, told me she ordered that in, and when it wasn't coming for weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. um, Yes, she actually never ordered the machine and she was having some personal financial problems so mm -hmm. she actually admitted to me that she ended up to put the money down on her home. So right. I gave her, uh, I was horrified, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, obviously for financial reasons but more so just because that was just, I just couldn't understand how anybody could do that. that well, no, that and especially was, in your position, you just moved out, you've got five children to look after, yeah. you're, you're hoping to make a better life for yourself. It's a strange life to you, because you're used strange. to a whole different environment where he's looking after you. And then you ended up taking her to court and I spent another 12,000, and did that get you anywhere? She went bankrupt. Which so, then means which you don't. That means I, <laughs> that I got nothing either. back. And no, and Aww. the my lawyer yeah. at that point had never told me that that was a possibility of something that could happen. Mm -hmm. And I really did live in a little a little bubble out there on my acreage, so I, yeah. I was unaware how any of any you, of you these just things. You're that, you're right. She's think, wrong. I, the I'm law being should honest. protect you. Yeah, I'm exactly. being honest. She isn't. Yeah, I what, thought what that's how it know. worked. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and it doesn't. No. So I no, I was living off of a line of credit that uh, I managed to get before I actually left my marriage. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what I would have done. So that was my welcome to the, the oh, real the world real lesson. World. Well, but, you know, yeah. and, and all the paperwork, I, I kind of, you know, I was hard on myself because, mm -hmm. you know, you should have done this more legally, Kim. But, but 
I, I won yeah. in court. So yeah. all the paperwork in the world wasn't gonna gonna no. get. It, yeah. And I had yeah. no I, I could not comprehend that when you win, why the person who has, you know, been proven guilty is not forced to give you that money back. Yeah. But uh, I agree. so winning is one thing, but collecting is another. Yeah, and that's I, I an didn't important realize note. That. I mean, I, it is. I've heard these stories. I, I've lived through some of these stories myself, similar ones, and that, and that's it's horrifying. Um, you hear it all the time, yeah. and you know, women don't know. No. They, they don't know, or or you know, even men for that. Absolutely, um, and if respect, you don't know so. the questions to ask, mm -hmm. I learned like the lessons of life mm -hmm. are tremendous after each one. Yeah, as long of as you're instance. learning through the mistakes, Absolutely. it's not a mistake, <laughs> right? It's, it's a progressional mistake, Absolutely. and it gets worse. And I want everybody to understand: um, this is all happening within a year that she's actually uh, left her her um, husband, and um, it gets worse. You were also putting out about forty thousand dollars. For your divorce lawyer because yes. your husband and his family uh, were very well off and he wasn't yes. paying alimony so mm -hmm. how are you that's sixty two thousand dollars how are you surviving all this um at that point not so well <laughs> at that point not very good yeah. um i mean um he was paying child support uh, mm -hmm. but only based on a fraction of what he was he supposedly his, uh, was yes, making yes. Yes. okay now is that where you decided to start your company it is i just decided to go back to my roots and what am i good at today what oh, can i accomplish okay. what can i do today mm -hmm. well i'm a freakishly organized person mm -hmm. um obsessed with cleanliness and and not not to a fault but just i like things in their place and cl clean mm -hmm. and so my sister was actually just coming home from Missouri, and that's what she did down there. So she said, why don't you think about it? I put some ads in the paper. I got a website. I, uh, all these things that I had no idea how to do. Mm -hmm. um, my, uh, my biggest help was the Google at 2 in the morning when I couldn't sleep. I learned everything right? I needed to So you to went learn. on there I just and punched in the most read. ridiculous questions mm -hmm. that I could think of. Yep. And forums came up for everything. And I was bothering my kids constantly. I've got two of my kids are very good on the computers. You know, yeah. can you show me this, that? And they were very patient with me oh, initially. And then initially. they're like, Mom, <laughs> you've got to learn how to do this yourself. And yeah. I'm just like... It was just like a foreign little box on my yeah, counter and I had, yeah. yes, I did, took a lot of photos and that's what I did on my computer. What was their impression that when they mm -hmm. first saw that daddy has a cleaning staff and mommy's now doing the cleaning? My one son just looked at me and he's like, but you, you used to have a cleaning lady, mom. And I said, yes, I did. <laughs> oh. and, and he said, now you are one. He was horrified. I went from... Uh, a place in my life where I was entertaining um, big groups of people yeah. and and for for the lack of a better word influential people mm -hmm. to being in their homes cleaning their homes actually when I started this to be very honest I just saw it initially as just some income just get some money coming yeah, in yeah just survive and I had no yeah, idea I, I had no yeah. idea um, the potential that there is so I'm mm -hmm. definitely not uh, going to be staying where I'm at right yeah. now. I, yeah. I definitely want to see this grow. We've, we've already sort of gone over where you think the company's going and that kind of thing. Is there any advice that you can give to our audience today that, um, you know, for people who are going through the same kind of drama or something similar, because I know everybody can relate to something in your story, and, and starting a company without the background, because a lot of people think, oh, I, if I don't have a university degree and I don't have this and I don't have that, I can't do it. And then they lock themselves back in. What advice would you give them? I believe the most important thing for me is trust in myself, mm -hmm. faith in myself, um, strength. It is to look around and to see everything that you have in your life that is positive mm -hmm. and to stop dwelling on what is negative and that, exactly. that there are no ceilings, there are no limitations. There are the only ones, they're ones that we allow to remain. Yeah. And the, it's emotional, and yeah. it's a roller coaster, and it's bumpy. There, I, I can, to be honest, there was a few times that I went, you know what, I'm not going to do this. Mm -hmm. I would have, you know, uh, something happen, something I couldn't figure out that night, or I'd be overtired, right. you know, and I was run down, and I was discouraged, and I felt beat. I felt like I was beaten. And uh, 
And then I woke up the next day and just quickly remind myself, I built myself a vision board mm -hmm. that hung above oh, my bed. excellent advice. I love and that. And I saw yeah. it when I went to bed. I saw it when I woke up. Mm -hmm. And then my kids were asking me about it. Mm -hmm. And I had to explain it to them. And the more I had to explain it, I realized, wow, I really learned all those teachings I'd listened to. Yeah. I thought that yeah. I didn't, but I did because I just taught them. And I put my feet on the ground in the morning and I just looked up to the greater power, whoever that is for all of us. We all have mm -hmm. that something and I just said thank you because in my mind I could have been ill mm -hmm. I could one of my children could have been ill there could have been so many more things in my life mm -hmm. but all these were all lessons and so my advice is to remember who you are and to find your passion We will be posting a complete bio on her if you want to know more. And um, maybe you could get a, a takeaway from something that she said and help you learn. And perhaps, you know, you, you can um, shorten the length of your, your new business career and not make some of the same mistakes that she's made. And I hope you enjoyed the uh, show. Thank you so much.